drowning is the number one cause of death in the BC fishing industry. It occurs quickly in cold water. In just a few short minutes, a life can be lost. Cold water is defined as water below 25 degrees Celsius. The most crippling effects occur at 15 degrees and less. The average temperature of BC waters is usually 14 degrees Celsius or less. Cold water kills in minutes. For BC's commercial fishing professionals, understanding how cold water affects the body is important. Knowledge, training, proper use of safety equipment and survival strategies is vital. Have to take this off. Dr. Chris Brooks is the leading Canadian expert on cold water survival. If you go over the side unprotected without a life jacket on, your chances of survival are very gloomy. However, if you go over the side with a PFD on or a life jacket on, then your chances of survival are immensely improved because your, your head is above water just during the cold shock phase. And also, it helps you immensely if you have to swim in cold water too. If you can go over the side with a survival suit on, then your, your chances improve dramatically. There are four stages of cold water immersion you should be concerned with. The first is cold shock, followed by swimming failure, then hypothermia, and finally, post-rescue collapse. Over half of the immersion-related drownings occur during the first shock of cold water on the body. Cold shock occurs the minute you enter the water. There is a massive increase in heart rate and blood pressure. Panic often sets in. The victim is unable to get air into their lungs and hold their breath. This can result in drowning within three to five minutes of immersion. In the waters of Hecate Strait, Crews were pulling and setting single pot crab gear over the starboard side of the fishing vessel. A 42-year-old crew member was replacing bait in a trap when the buoy line for the trap became entangled in the propeller. He held onto the trap and was pulled overboard. He was not wearing a PFD. He immediately panicked from the effects of cold water. Another crew member jumped in and secured him with a line. They pulled him on board and CPR was performed. After only 11 minutes in the water, he could not be revived. The pathologist's report found the victim's death was consistent with drowning. So this basically is the most dangerous thing, and we call it coal shock. When I uh, hit the water, all I had on was rain gear. Within five minutes, I had to kick all that off. So in October, I was in my underwear, no shirt, rolling around in this weather. There are three critical areas where the body loses heat most quickly. The head and neck, the sides of the chest, and the groin region. If you are thrown overboard, go immediately into the help position. The help, or heat escape lessening position, protects the critical body areas and slows down the loss of heat. Get into this position if you are alone in the water. I'm a good swimmer, I'd be fine, is a deadly misconception. The ability to swim in warm water is no indication of how a human will swim in cold water. The second stage is called swimming failure. And this is due to rapid cooling of nerves and muscles. Many times you hear this in coroner's inquests. You hear the fact, I saw him go over the side, I saw him start to swim, he swam a little way, I saw his shoulders go down, he still tried to swim, and then all of a sudden he disappeared. How can that happen? Because he can swim many, many lengths of the Vancouver pool, and yet he drowned. With short-term immersion, there is a continuing loss of body heat. A shutdown of the extremity occurs, and muscle coordination is lost. The victim often becomes incapacitated, and swimming failure results. I still had quite a bit of strength, so I could stay up on a float, and after I lost all my strength, I was just rolling in the surf, and the waves would come crashing over top of my head and send me under, and I'd have to struggle to get back up to the surface for a quick breath of air and whatever other water comes in, and uh, it was just beating me. After 30 minutes or more of immersion, there is a significant cooling to the core body temperature. The victim is in a semi-conscious state, disoriented, 
and often unable to respond to rescue efforts. Death by drowning or heart failure often results. I was in the water for about an hour and a half. And after some time, then your fingers are not workable. And you try and stay in the fetal position with your knees up and arms down. And you start to lose your senses. Water penetrates your body in places that, you know, because your muscles relax and uh, you know what's happening. And uh, you're very helpless, you know. And your thinking process is hampered. Hypothermia must be treated immediately and carefully to increase chances of survival. Victims should be handled gently to avoid jolts that could damage the heart. Use rescue breathing if the victim's breathing has stopped. The condition is critical if the victim is getting stiff, unconscious, or is showing signs of clouded consciousness, such as slurred speech. Move them to a dry, sheltered place. Prevent further heat loss by covering the head and neck. Wrap the victim in blankets. Do not rub the surface of the body. Use things like warm towels, water bottles, or hand warmers applied to the head, neck, and trunk. Be careful to avoid burns. Get medical assistance immediately. The threat to survival continues up to several hours after rescue. Victims may experience post-rescue collapse where an excessive drop in blood pressure results in heart failure. And when we pull people out the water, basically what happens is um, the heart is cold, the blood is more viscous because they've chilled off, everything is cold, and all of a sudden the blood pulls down into the lower body. Now at the same time, the heart is not working as efficiently. It's like the person has a faint. It's just really like fainting except because of the condition of the person, it's much more lethal, and they may well die at this stage. Take a Marine Emergency Duties Med course to learn about survival in cold water. There's Med courses that uh, the Marine Institute puts on. Um, we're actually supposed to have them. Everybody who goes on, on these boats are supposed to have some MED training, which is Marine Emergency Duties. That's where you take your life rafts, you throw them in the water, you actually take out the survival suits, try them on. We always pull them out and get the guys to put them on before we go out, just so they know what they've, they've got to do. Staying out of the water is staying alive. The best way to survive cold water immersion is to avoid entry into the water until the last possible moment. If you have to go over the side, and don't forget, never abandon ship unless it's absolutely necessary, is to put on as much clothing as possible. The old adage that you should take all of your clothes off because you can't swim with your clothes on is absolutely wrong. Your best chance of survival is to have safety approved equipment, PFDs, life jackets, immersion suits, and have them on. I had a, a, a jacket on underneath my rain gear called the Stormy Seas, the one with a blow up. And it was so old that I just blew it up a little bit to make sure that it wouldn't pop. It was the fact that I was wearing that PFD that I'm here today. No question in my mind. Some of the stuff with the foam, stuff of which is fine for life jacket and stuff, but it's so hot you can't work in it. So you have to have something that floats and is you can work in it so the person will wear it all the time. I think that's the key. They put the bolt in reverse and the skiff flipped over and we got sucked to the propeller. The other fellow in the skiff with me, he had his right arm severed almost at the shoulder and he got slashed across the neck and just missing his juggler. I had my right arm almost severed and my right leg almost severed, severed in several places. Going to the skiffs and wearing life vests. Full policy. I probably wouldn't have made the surface without it. And then once I was on the surface, it kept me afloat. Immersion suits provide the best protection from cold and exposure in the water. An immersion suit acts like a personal life raft that encloses all but your eyes and nose. It keeps your body heat inside and prevents cold water from seeping in. An immersion suit will keep you afloat and create a large target for rescuers to see as most of your body is near the surface of the water. Make sure you have the right size suit for you. Don't wait for an emergency. Practice putting on your immersion suit until you can do it in less than one minute. Take the suit out of the container. Pull it on as you would overalls. Pull the hood over your head. Close the zipper with a slow, even pull, and then close the face cover. 
Being able to put on your immersion suit quickly can save your life. Always follow the manufacturer's recommended maintenance schedule, including having the suit tested and repaired at the factory. Learning your suit has a fault before an accident this will not kill you, this morning. but after the fact, it can. Take the suit out of storage to air it and perform regular maintenance. Look at the condition of the zipper. Lubricate it with a non-petroleum product like beeswax or soap. Check the whistle, light and reflective tape. Store the immersion suit with the zipper partially up. Put a toggle on the zipper tab. Do not dry immersion suits near any heat source or in direct sunlight, as both can damage the fabric. After an immersion suit has been exposed to water other than fresh water, it should be thoroughly rinsed in fresh water and dried completely before being restowed. Suits stored for long periods will chafe at folds. If you have an older suit, take it in and have it checked by the manufacturer. It's important that dry suits get tested. We test them initially when they, they, when they leave the factory to make sure there's no leaks. And, and periodically they should come into the factory for testing. We do all the military suits in Canada, Army, Navy, Air Force, and they periodically, uh, depending on the force and the use of the suit, are in here once a year, once every couple of years. It's completely immersed in water under pressure, and if there's bubbles coming out, that means water could come in. Two cups of water means 30% loss of body heat, uh, so it's important to have a dry, dry suit. Incidents happen when we least expect them. Crew members have gone overboard drawing water into a pail or urinating over the side. Hold on to the vessel at all times. Install handrails and guardrails. Keep work areas free of slipping or tripping hazards. Make sure your vessel has a ladder or other means to climb back in. Be prepared. Know the realities of cold water and have strategies in place. Do all crew members have life jackets and immersion suits? Are they regularly checked and maintained? If you are thrown overboard, do you know the help position to conserve body heat? Training, knowledge, and preparation prevents fatalities.